Hey guys, this is Scott and I'm here with another Soap UI video. This is video number three and today we're going to be going through creating some basic Groovy scripting assertions. If you want to follow along then you can create your own project or download the sample project in the description below. Just remember to download the wisdom as well. Uh, once you've downloaded it, just go File, Import, navigate to where you've saved your project. Open it up, you'll get this uh, pop-up box complaining about the WSDL. So just under Actions, choose Select WSDL and navigate to where you've saved the WSDL. Open and OK and should be good to go. So just like in previous videos, we want to run our mock. Double click it, hit the little green triangle and they'll give us something to run our test against. So we'll open up our test and we've got Wonder Woman as the alias and we'll send the request. So you might notice we've got a few more bits of details coming back now. We've got uh, the real name, we've also got the first name, the last name and the name of my neighbour. Now the reason I've extended that out is to highlight why you might want to use a script assertion instead of using a out of the box contains assertion. So if we just go into our assertions, let's create a standard contains. Let's assume that my neighbor's name is actually Diana. So we send this request, we get back Barry as the neighbor's name. But of course our name is Diana, so we would fail this test. But as you can see, the assertion is actually passed. And that's because the value that it's looking for, Diana, is here and it's here. So as far as this assertion is concerned, it's it's a pass. So we want to drill that assertion down to specifically be looking at the neighbor's name and matching that up with Diana and not the whole response. So to do that, we're going to open up a script assertion. You can see it opens up with an empty box. And we're just going to extend that out so I've got a bit more room. I also want to be able to see the request. I'm just going to move that down a little bit. Okay. So this is where we're going to be entering our Groovy scripting. And let's start with telling it what we expect. So we've got to create a, a variable. Hopefully you have some programming knowledge where you can create variables and whatnot. So let's call this one the expected name. And it's going to equal Diana. Right. So that's what we're expecting in the response. Now we want to pull in that response. We want to drill down to that, that one element. And what we can use to do this is different ways. You can use uh, Query and XPath, but we're going to use the XML slurper. Uh, the XML slurper will pull in that response into like an object, so then we can interact with it quite easily. So we're going to define the object, and this is a response that equals new XML slurper. Open close bracket, pass text, open bracket, message exchange dot get response content. Open close bracket and close the bracket. Uh, if we wanted to get the, the request, we just change that response word to request. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to log the response just to show that we can we can see it and logging for this we're just going to use the log.info so when we use the log.info we're going to see the output in this little window below so log.info and then we're just going to log the response click the little green run button and by default because we've got no assert statement we're getting that assert pass but more importantly we can see here is our response so it's not going to tell us all the elements it's just all the data that we've got so we've got diana prince diana prince barry diana prince diana prince barry great so now we want to go down to that next level so we're going to define a actual name 
And this is going to equal the response object dot and then it's basically a path to get to the data we want starting off at body body dot get hero real name response dot the one we want is get neighbor name result get neighbor name result right so if we want we can then log that same process but now we're going to log actual name you can also add in text so you can identify things so here is the actual name in the response right so when we run this we should see the string here is the actual name in the response and then the actual name here is the actual name in the response very brilliant so now we want to create our assertion there's many different ways of doing assertion you can do assert true assert false um, for a, or an actual statement so what we're going to do is go assert actual name equals that's double equals expected name So we can leave it there, we can run it, and it's going to fail. It's got this kind of error thing which looks a little bit unclear. So we might add in a little fail statement. So we can add a, a text to output if the test fails. So we're going to go actual name, actual name. doesn't match expected name and then we're going to print out what the actual name is and what the expected name is so we can actually see it so if we run that now we get a bit of a different message coming back and see that actual name Barry doesn't match expected name Diana which is perfect that's what we wanted to want to do achieve We want this to pass say say Diana moved out and Barry moved in so now we're expecting Barry we can rerun that test and see that it's passed just before we finish that up I will show you one or two more things uh, in this little script below you can right click and click clear to wipe it out also right down the bottom you've got the script log uh, and I'll show you how that works we'll just uh, click OK on this assertion we're going to run that, we should now see it's all passing. Go into the script log, just clear that out as well. Run the test, you can see that our log is being populated here. Uh, also, if you run the test from a test step level, it'll produce it here. So, there's an example of a basic Groovy assertion enabling you to assert that a value in the response is the value that you expect it to be. It's quite beneficial to learn more about Groovy. You definitely can start building out very powerful assertions. So that's all we've got time for in this video. I hope you liked it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and in the next video I might go through creating some actual logic inside the assertions. So see you in the next video.